problems five, six, and seven in the genetics review, uh, which is near the end of your packet here. And the reason I'm going to go through five, six, and seven is because those are blood typing problems, and I just want you all to have an example of how to solve blood typing problems. Um, <clears throat> just uh, as a little bit of a background here, I want you to understand that um, blood typing is a good example of codominance. And codominance, of course, is a situation which, in which uh, two traits are going to be expressed in the heterozygous genotype combination. So that means neither allele is dominant over the other. All right. Um, and this particular situation where you have AB blood is a good example of codominance. Uh, what I want to do here really quickly before I start solving this problem is to start to list phenotypes and how they correspond with particular genotypes. All right. So um, for type AB blood, uh, that's one type. Uh, let's do, oh, let's make a list here, phenotypes. Uh, we can have type AB, we could have type A, we can have type B, and then we can have blood type O. Uh, and the corresponding genotypes, there's two ways to symbolize them. All right, let me get rid of this arrow here so that doesn't, it's not in the way. Um, we can write genotypes um, with a capital I and a letter in superscript following that for the dominant forms. Um, so um, kind of like this. Some textbooks use this format. Uh, you know, and of course you can be heterozygous for type A. Um, so that could be written this way. And notice what I'm going to do is write a lowercase i there. Um, this is one way to symbolize the genotype for type B blood. And then, of course, we can do this as well, because you can be heterozygous for type B. Um, and if we're going to follow this model, the only way to symbolize the genotype that corresponds with the type O phenotype is to have these two little letter, letter I's. Um, but it's a simpler way to write a genotype that corresponds just by using the letters without um, the I's. So this is how we can symbolize in a little bit more simple way our genotypes that correspond with our four main blood types. Okay. Um, and the A and the B dominate over the O, uh, but they're co-dominant to one another. So what I'm going to do is use these symbols as I solve this particular scenario. Let's say a mother has type AB blood and the father has type O blood. What are the possible genotypes or blood types of their children? So let's do the Punnett square in that situation. So mom is type AB. And notice I'm using the AB genotype rather than the capital I's uh, that go with this other way of symbolizing the genotype. And dad has got to be uh, OO. Okay? So here's mom, here's dad. Let's uh, put their gamete possibilities on the side and on the top of our Punnett square. Um, and as you can see here, the two blood types that are going to be possible are going to be type A and type B. Okay? So type A blood type, of course, corresponds with these genotypes, and then the type B blood type corresponds with these genotypes. All right? Um, and their children would have a 50% chance of having type A blood and a 50% chance of having type B blood. Let's look at problem six really quickly here. A mother has type O blood and the father has type A blood. Okay, so that means mom is OO, and dad is either AO or AA. We don't know yet. Uh, and in fact, we don't um, we don't know at all. What are the possible blood types of their children? Well, we need to do two Punnett squares because Dad's got two possible genotypes. So, let's put Mom's gamete possibilities over here, Dad's gamete possibilities on top of the square. And as you can see in this situation, half the kids would have type A blood, and half the kids would have type O blood. But if dad is homozygous for type A, as it turns out in that scenario, all the children would have type A blood. And in fact, if we looked at their offspring, their children, we could get an indication, um, potentially, of what genotype dad is. If some of their kids have type O blood, then we know that dad was homo uh, not homozygous. He'd be heterozygous for type A blood. 
Let's look at number seven here. Uh, mother has type A blood. Okay, so here's mom. She's going to be either AA or AO in her genotype. Dad, father has type B blood. So similarly, he's going to have homozygous for B or potentially he'd be heterozygous for B. But now this next sentence here gives us a clue about what particular genotype they must be. If the grandmothers on both sides of the family have type O blood, so that means his mom was type OO and her mom was type OO, that means their moms only had a little O allele to give to them. So that must mean that both of these particular parents would be the heterozygous condition for type A and type B. So what then I'm going to do here is put mom's gamete possibilities over here on a Punnett square, uh, dad's gamete possibilities across the top of a Punnett square and see how those gametes could potentially recombine in a fertilization. And as you can see as this is turning out, <coughs> all of the possibilities uh, of the four main blood types are, are uh, possible here. So um, type AB, type A, type B, and type O. All blood types, all the four main blood types are possible. Okay, that's it for now.